Hey there, Monster Gardeners. Today we have Larry from Blue Lab and he's gonna tell us all about this awesome controller that you brought us and let us know a little bit more about what it does and what makes it so useful. Thanks a lot, Scott. I appreciate the opportunity to actually talk about our pro controller. This is by Blue Lab. Blue Lab is a New Zealand company. We had meters for measuring and affecting your pH. This is our new pro controller that you can add up to 12 peripods to, to affect your pH along with your nutrients. I'm going to quick, give a quick rendition on how to actually uh, program this and run it and answer any questions that Scott might have. Okay, first of all, I'd like to show you uh, how to calibrate. If you're familiar with Blue Lab meters, they all calibrate the same way in the sense of you put your probe into seven first, and with this meter here, you would take it down to calibration mode. And so I have it in 7.0, you wait for it to stabilize, and then you push calibrate until it says pH cal and let go. Why is it important to use seven first and not four? Well, you can calibrate three points, seven to 10, seven to four, or seven, 10, and four, but you should always start with neutral, which is 7.0, and then calibrate, preferably in the direction that you hope to be measuring in. Most plants like um, acidity, so there's a good chance you'll be calibrating seven to four, but you should always start seven first, neutral, and then send the meter in the direction you plan on going. And you should never store the probe in water, correct? Never store it in RO water. Best thing to store it in, as a matter of fact, is KCL solution. This is potassium chloride. The next best is four. Never store it in RO water, because if you do, you're basically ruining your probe. Um, RO water has no conductivity and it spends its short life looking for electricity to trade. That isn't there. So never store it in, in RO water. It hit 7.0 though. Let's continue our calibration. I'll dip it into water. Don't want to cross contaminate it. Stick it in the four. Very important with all our meters. Wait for it to stabilize around four before you finish the, cal the calibration. Once again, same deal. Push calibrate until it says cow, let go. You've noticed over the last couple years that all of our meters have a series of circles going across the screen. In the old days, if you would have pushed the meter too soon to calibrate it before it stabilized, you'd get an error message, which is very discouraging when you're trying to do something on a new piece of equipment. Now we do the patience for you, so you see these ser series of circles going across the screen, your meter's calibrating. Once it hits 4.0, I'm gonna stick it in the water that we have and then start showing you what this Pro Controller can actually do. We are now calibrated. I'll stick it in this lovely water in beautiful Roner Park. Where's our pH here in Roner Park? We are, let me take it up to monitor mode and it'll be right there. Your pH is still climbing. Your conductivity on the 700 scale is 350. Temperature 68, has it stabilized on pH? It looks like we're right about 6.4, which is a lot lower than the pH of my water in Santa Rosa. I'll have to tell you, I'm usually somewhere between 7.2 to 7.5. Yeah, yeah, it depends. I mean, here we are in California. If you're out of state, say in Oregon, maybe Vancouver, uh, Canada, you have beautiful clean water. Your conductivity is barely there. Your pH is usually pretty stable. Over here in drought land, California, it could change midday because of the, wherever they're accessing their water. All right, so let me explain what this actually will do. Like I said, this is our Pro Controller. You can have up to 12 different peripods. This is four of them. You can purchase these in sets of four and three, up to 12. Now the nice thing about this machine here is you can manipulate it right here on the screen itself or you put it in the monitor mode and come to your computer and be able to do it right here. Now, as you can see on the screen here, I have my Pro Controller. I also have a Guardian Connect that's already hooked up also. And if I was manipulating that, I can actually just put my, my cursor on it and take care of business. How do you add the different uh, controllers and, and things to this program? And is this, is this a program or is this something that you log into on the Blue Lab website? On the Blue Lab website, what you have here is a stick. 
that you that comes with the pro controller that you can download the blue lab um, information okay so software. It's really easy very easy it automatically picks up with what you're doing with the stick right here then every meter that we have has a four digit code uh, right here is CX5R. You add that to the very bottom, push add, and you'll see your new addition. I have the Pro Controller. I also have the Guardian uh, on screen right now. And so you can add up to many machines you want in your for uh, for whatever you're doing. Like and with the power to, pod? With the with the uh, no no no. This is this is just this stick will pick up any computer, any any of the meters or controllers that have the connectivity, the little orange band that goes along here. Okay. So you can add, if you had five of these in your grow, you can have five of these showing what, you're, what they're doing and then you just hit it with your cursor and it'll give you the explanation right now. I have it on actual and I have the, what's required across the board too. We're, we're really far off and I'll show you how to manipulate that. Okay, what we have here, what you need to do first with your Pro Controller is set what is required, what you prefer as you um, for your, your ideal situation. I have connectivity and I have pH, and if I scroll down, we have temperature. So basically, you set your requirement, then you set your high and low alarms. You want to make sure that you don't hurt your plants, so you set your alarms on the high and low so that your machine will actually turn off if you get to those those, um, those and then there's points. an optional lockout I was noticing that you guys have as well that will that if it hits that point it will lock out completely. it will lock out and completely stop the controller from from dosing anything exactly right and even if it gets to the point where you're looking for what's required if it's in mid dose and it gets right there it'll lock it out immediately so it's not going to overshoot e either but you need to put in the proper on time and off time so it doesn't over overshoot it mm -hmm. or try to overshoot it but you can manipulate it right here, like I said. We have a 1260, I'm gonna add a few points, take it up to 1400. I'm gonna add to the high alarm a couple more too, and then maybe just lower my lower alarm. I can do that with pH also. I have the requirement of 6.0. Um, my high alarm is 6.6, .6. let's change that once. And my low alarm is 5.2. Once I'm satisfied is what I have manipulated, I just push apply and this will talk to my sheet machine over here and as we go down I'll show you how it's working on that side there. But it makes it simple to do it here, you can do it on the machine itself, but you have all your, all your uh, controls at your fingers and right it's here. it's wireless so you don't have to necessarily be there if you have it all set up. You can just manipulate it from your all. system at home or... Well, that's... not at home. This needs to be somewhat near to be able to pick up your machine. Okay, so you don't have to physically be in the room and it has the ability to control a large room. Exactly. Um, without actually having to be right in the middle. And we have extendable ex extenders too, so you can have multiple greenhouses and it'll daisy chain the information to your computer. That's so awesome. So you can have quite, quite a distance. So, away. but you would have one controller for each zone, correct? Yes. Okay, yes. so if you had let's say three gutter connected greenhouses and one of them was for veg and the other two for flower you would have one controller for each correct absolutely okay absolutely i'm understanding this. and you can manipulate your your pumps here to decide on what you uh what you're actually feeding in and the ratios of how you want to feed so let's go to nutrient dosing here now i only have four pumps right here but <clears throat> I have my first pump for pH and I decided I'm going to use an acid to go down and I diluted it to 5%. You can make any changes regarding that by just um, deciding, okay, I actually have it down, diluted down to 10%. So you're basically just deciding what you have going on so you can tell yourself further down the line. And so you can manipulate your pumps to the different ratios you, you want to feed it. You can also name which pump you have. I have a little honor to uh, Hunter Thompson with uh, Fear A, Loathing B, your A and B, and a little Gonzo Cow Mag. But what I'm really saying is if you want to change it to No Fear or something equally silly, you can, but put it in, name it to the bottle you're actually using. Now, I have the first pump for pH, the rest of them I have for EC. If you were gonna manipulate, manipulate this to your feed schedule, you would take the highest number and that would be 100%. So I have 20 milligrams 
at 100%. As you can see from here, 20 milligrams is, not, is 91%. I have my CalMag down to 9%, and this will automatically change as you raise or lower it. Anyway, what's really nice about this, you can do this for all your pumps. Once you're satisfied, you can save this, and so when you go to your next uh, grow series, you can go back to load from file, and go to your first week, put it on, load it, and your first, uh, your first week of whatever your nutrient uh, formula is will come back and you'll be able to take care of business there. Can you pre-program it so you have like, let's say four weeks of veg and then eight weeks of flour? Can you pre-program it so that it follows the feed schedule that you receive? It will feed, it'll follow your feed schedule, but once again, you have to load it from the file. So as it changes, if it doesn't change that whole week, leave it the way it is. Mm -hmm. But once you go to the next, uh, change whatever it is you can change it manually or go to load from file and just put it in and it'll automatically kick in I have it on week one in other words let me go to week two and you'll see the change go on load it and you can see it change right there so it's saved for later on yes indeed so you can do as many as you want in terms of in terms of how you want it to change you just have to click the save to file absolutely and save it, to file. And whatever you want to name that one week two week three week whatever you have absolutely and if there's a week here that you just don't want to run anything because this Flush. week you don't yes for flushing you can just turn it off as simple as that too off and it won't be running anything at all you can change it to ph but i hope you don't keep it on ec <laughs> and you're good to go so that's really nice. You can manipulate for whatever kind of recipe. And once again, you can change it right here on the screen. Push apply and it'll change right there. Now, when we worked with it earlier, I changed some of the, uh, <clears throat> the, um, the highs and lows and whatnot. And I want to show you here how to put it in control mode. So I have it on monitor right now. That's just showing what's going on in my water with PPM. I have it on 700, my temperature and my pH. Take it down to mode and basically I could change this from PPM or TDS 500, Fahrenheit to Celsius, let's not. Acquire, required uh, or control directions. Since I'm adding EC to raise my uh, raise my uh, EC and my water, my direction for connectivity is up. I have a down bottle, so for my pH, it's down. Once again, we did this earlier on the screen right here. This is my required. I have my required from what I did on the screen at 1400. My high is 1750, my low is 490. Let's talk about on times now. When you're manipulating your conductivity or pH and you want it to do it automatically, you need to figure out how much it takes to move your pH or your conductivity 0.1. You don't really want to overshoot it. You want to undershoot it a little bit so it reacts subtly. I have it here for 20 uh, seconds feed for my pH, for my conductivity to move it down here. You can change it by just pushing pH, and now you can see that I have 11 seconds for changing my pH. You also need to figure out your off time. Your off time is when you get circulation of all your nutrients before the meter will analyze it and dose it again if need be. I have it here for five minutes. I have it down here for my pH eight minute run after you figure out, which isn't hard to do also. Lastly, I showed you calibration. Let's put it into the control mode. And your pumps come on to actually do the feeding that you, that you um, put into the system right here. And because this is a display unit, the tubes are, are really short just for packing it around. They would be a lot longer. Oh yes, and, and these come separately too. In reality, this would be above your tank. Mm -hmm. This would be off to the side. And it comes with tubes and beads due to your assets and your feeding. Another nice thing about these pumps too though, is you prime them of course to fill up your tubes, but you can also calibrate these. So, uh, say in about a year, you're, you're wondering if your A and B, which is being used all the time, might be wearing out a bit. Mm -hmm. You can literally calibrate all your, your, your pumps together so they, they feed the same amount of volume. You're not gonna speed these up or slow these down, but what you would do is you'd start on your first pump. You can pick number one there and then run it for two minutes. I'm not gonna run it for two minutes, turn it off. Run it for two minutes and catch the volume of uh, nutrient stock that you're using. Mark your container, 
push save, and then do all your other oh, pumps. Oh, in a graduated cylinder, so you can see exactly how much they're Exactly, dispensing. you're not caring about the two minutes anymore, you're comparing, can take, uh, you're concerned about just the volume mm -hmm. of product. So take pump two up to the volume, save it. Pump three, same deal, calibrate it, save it. So you know further down the line whether you have pumps that have been working overtime or maybe one item on pump six has a little bit thicker viscosity, you'll be able to teach your, your pumps or at least calibrate your pumps to be able to put out the same amount of volume. And these come in two different sizes, correct? Uh, yes, they come in two, they come in, uh, this is our M3s. These will do 120 mils per minute. We also have M4s that will do 1200 mils per minute. So for a larger reservoir? For a much larger reservoir, absolutely. Commercial application. Yes, yes, that's a lot of mills. A yeah. lot of mills to feed. But yes, we have a commercial capacity too. And so once again, like I was saying, this will feed your whole reservoir. It will top feed or top, uh, yes, top feed once you're for your tank, when you bring more fresh water in, put your EC exactly where you need it to be. Uh, you can put this on block out um, if you're if you're pumped, you know, you're feeding your your um, your, your nutrients are out there to feed. You don't want more water to come in or more nutrients. You can block it out automatically with your uh, your pump valve. And so this has a brain not to overfeed or underfeed also. You'd mentioned something about the temperature probe and now it could be placed remotely. Thank you very much. I do not have with me the bottom line. You can get our um, Pro Controller. And the reason why I like this, if you know Blue Lab, our temperature gauge is in the Connectivity Pro. This comes with another temperature gauge. You can have this in the water. You can also have this up in the air. If you have it up in the air to affect your um, fans, you have your fans um, plugged in to the power pod. And basically it will turn on once your temperature gets to where you need it to be to turn on or turn off. You can also do your heaters and chillers for your your tank if that's what you need and that will be automated also thanks for tuning in monster gardeners as always this and many other astounding products are available exclusively at monstergardens.com drop a comment below and tell us what you think have a great day thank you